Welcome to the end of 2023, where we've recently witnessed a rise in the interest of bedslingers, all thanks to the recent release of the A1 by Bamboo Lab, a machine we were all expecting, but not this soon. Here are the timestamps for anyone interested. I did my homework on this machine, watching a collection of reviews to give you the general consensus on the A1, the too long didn't watch version. Let's get into it. This is the A1, a bedslinger with Core XY speed and quality, or so Bamboo Labs claims. In reality, you probably won't be printing at its max speeds and acceleration, and they're kind of just marketing numbers. It is the A1 Mini successor with a full frame and larger build volume comparable to their X1C and other Core XY builds. Let's pros and cons this machine, starting with the cons, because I like my bad news first. This machine is a more involved build right out of the box than the A1 Mini, which can be seen as a con if you'd like to just get up and running. However, according to most reviews, you should be up and printing in about 30 minutes, so it's not too bad. The capacitive touchscreen is a bit sluggish, although it is in full color. The monitoring camera on the system has a low frame rate, sitting at up to 1080p, but the location doesn't even give you a full view of the build plate, which is kind of frustrating, especially if you're trying to monitor a large print. The A1 doesn't have spaghetti detection, nor the AI inspected first layer capability, and the AMS light is limited to only for materials. The AMS hub that we know from the other Core XY machines lets the user connect up to four AMS units to their system, maxing out at 16 materials. Another con would be the limitation on the types of materials you can print, and this may have been done in intentionally to differentiate Bamboo Lab's machine lineup. So here's a list of the ideal versus non-recommended materials to print on the A1. There may be two reasons for this differentiation. Firstly, the machine is sold unenclosed, and secondly, the build plate only reaches a maximum of 100 degrees Celsius, which is a limiting factor for printing some types of materials. Back on the note of the AMS light, although it can be top mounted, which saves some table space, I'd honestly be nervous about how how top heavy it is and if the vibrations from higher print speeds would cause any problems, either that or accidentally knocking the machine over. And probably the most obvious con of the A1 is, well, the poop. Alright, enough with the negative, let's switch gears to the pros. The A1 features a rigid gantry, especially compared to the cantilever setup of the A1 Mini. It's definitely an aesthetically pleasing machine that has a great ecosystem between the printer, slicer, as well as the branded bamboo filaments and good material profiles. Ecosystem integration is something we've seen pretty much with all of their machines. Like the Mini, the A1 continues to make speed printing and color printing accessible. It also features full auto calibration, active flow rate compensation and active motor noise cancellation. Although we know from a noise perspective, printing at comparable Core XY speeds means it definitely won't be a silent machine. This machine also features input shaping which should come in handy with cancelling out certain vibrations at high print speeds, hopefully eliminating ringing in your prints. A big pro for this printer is the direct drive extruder and quick nozzle swap which we've also seen in the Mini. Some other quick pros are the nice textured PE EI sheet, good for slayers, a now removable power cable, and filament tangle and runout sensors. Hopefully you caught all that, and if you didn't, here's a full list of the pros and cons mentioned in this video as a summary. Oh, and I guess mini update. I am now officially a bamboo user. That's an X1C. I remember in the last video I made, the A1 mini video, I made a comment about how I've never touched a bamboo. Oops. Before purchasing my X1C, I was a hardcore Prusa Mark III user. It does hurt my heart to say this though, but recently printing on my X1C has been more reliable than my Prusa, and I think I'll be more likely to repurchase another bamboo in the sense that I just like a workhorse that can consistently show up for projects and can print reliably and with high speeds. But where the Prusa still wins for me is the fact that it is open source, easy to mod, tinker on, and fix. With it being open source, it is obvious Prusa works hard towards supporting the overall growth and improvement of the 3D printing community and its development. And I think machines in the Prusa collection are great for learning 3D printing, especially when you can purchase the kit and build the machine from scratch and really study and learn how all the parts work together to create something that can 3D print your ideas to life. 
So, what are your thoughts on the A1? Overall, it looks to be a pretty good machine. I'd be very interested to see how it holds up over time. Looks like you made it to the end of this video. Consider subscribing to support this channel, and if you enjoy this kind of content, let me know down below. Catch you in the next one.